Hello and welcome to Simpson's Strong Ties training video, part of the connector training for contractor series. Throughout this series, you'll learn basic installation techniques for fasteners, joist and beam hangers, mud sill anchors, plated truss connectors, and hold downs. After watching this video, Introduction to Mud Sill Anchors, you'll be familiar with mud sill anchor terms. You'll also know basic installation techniques for mud sill anchors and be able to install a variety of Simpson Strong Tie mud sill anchors correctly. You need to know that products that come in contact with pressure treated wood should have the appropriate corrosion resistant coating. The products referenced in this video have our standard G90 coating, but are also available with Simpson Strong Ties Z Max Galvanized Finish or in stainless steel. If you're not sure which product to use, check with your local Simpson representative. You'll understand the information in this video better if you're familiar with terms associated with mud sill anchors. Let's review some of these terms now. Mud sill anchors are connectors or bolts that attach the sill plate of a framed wall section to its foundation. This prevents the house from sliding or lifting off its foundation. A sill plate is the bottom horizontal framing member of an outside wall frame or a raised floor system. It lays flat on top of and attaches to the foundation with mud sill anchors. A sill plate is usually made of 2 by or 3 by treated lumber, but the widths of a sill plate can vary. A stem wall is a narrow wall foundation that's usually 4 to 8 inches wide. A stem wall can be made of either concrete or masonry block. Masonry block is also called block or concrete masonry unit. In this video, I'll refer to it as block. A stem wall made of block has several rows or courses of block stacked on top of each other. Grout is the concrete fill that's poured into blocks. While it's also called concrete, I'll refer to it as grout throughout this video. Consolidation refers to the concrete or grout that surrounds a mud sill anchor. When concrete or grout is consolidated, there are no air pockets between the anchor and the concrete or grout. Anchors are only as good as the concrete around them. Therefore, consolidation is very important for correct installation, and you should always follow the installation processes to ensure correct consolidation. Slab on grade, also called slab, is a type of foundation where a concrete floor is placed directly on the soil to create a slab. The edge of a slab is usually its thickest part and acts as the footing for the wall. Forms are structures that are built to shape and hold concrete in place until it cures. Forms can be made of foam, wood, or steel, and they can be temporary or permanent. Foam forms usually become permanent insulation. Finally, a brick ledge is a foundation wall where brick or veneer may rest. That wraps up industry terms. Listen for these terms throughout the video. Now, let's take a look at mud sill anchors. Your job is to install the mud sill anchors that the engineer or designer specifies correctly and in the right places. There might be occasions when you won't know which mud sill anchor to use. If this happens, don't install just any mud sill anchor that you have in your truck. Using the wrong mud sill anchor could cause inspection problems and result in red tags. In some cases, it could even shut down a job because it could lead to life safety issues. Instead, check the plans. If they're not specific, ask the designer or local building department. Simpson Strong Tie offers a variety of different mud sill anchors for different foundation designs and forming techniques. A foundation type may actually dictate which type of mud sill anchor is specified. For example, some mud sill anchors, such as the MASB, are for block foundations only. 
but others, like the MAS, are for use only with concrete foundations. You can even install some mud sill anchors, such as the MAB, in both concrete and block foundations. Regardless of the foundation type, here are a few tips to help ensure correct installation. Always check that a mud sill anchor doesn't move or drop into the concrete or grout deeper than necessary while the concrete or grout is still wet. This can happen when the concrete or grout is too wet. Also, some mud sill anchors allow for alternate installations. Before you begin an alternate installation, though, talk to the framer. You want to be sure that your installation matches the framer's application. Now I'll walk you through the steps for Simpson Strong Type basic mud sill anchor installations. Anchor bolts, which are also called ABs, J bolts, and L bolts, must be centered in the sill plate. The anchor mate is used only in concrete applications and helps ensure correct anchor bolt installation by holding the anchor bolts in the right place before a concrete pour. The anchor mate is used only temporarily and you must remove it once the concrete cures. Note that you can use the anchor mate only with wood forms. The MAS is designed for concrete applications such as slabs or concrete stem walls. It's usually installed at the edge of the slab or stem wall and lets the finisher trowel right up to the edge without having to steer around the anchor bolts. An MAS has two straps, a center hole, an embedment line, and a hook. Sometimes the hook is called a spoon or scoop, but in this video I'll refer to it as a hook. Being familiar with these parts is important for correct installation. The alignment mark on the MAS is important for one of the MAS's alternate installations, which I'll explain in more detail shortly. You can install the MAS either before or right after you pour the concrete. In either case, when you install the MAS correctly, the embedded portion is fully submerged in concrete and the straps are outside the concrete. To install the MAS before the concrete is poured, set the straps on top of the form directed away from the inside of the foundation. Set the embedded portion in the area where you'll pour the concrete. To complete this installation, drive a duplex nail through each strap and into the form. You could also drive an 8 penny or 10 penny common nail through the center hole and into the inside of the form instead. If you use the center hole, though, don't use a shorter nail because it could cause the anchor to come loose. Then the anchor could shift or be pulled out of place when you pour the concrete. You can also install the MAS after the concrete is poured but while it's still wet. To do this, hold one strap while you submerge the hook in the wet concrete up to the embedment line. To finish the installation, wiggle the anchor from side to side to draw it tightly to the inside of the form and to ensure concrete consolidation. Make sure that the straps are flush to the top of the form. Then let the concrete cure. Watch that the anchor doesn't sink or move during the curing process. The MAS allows for alternate installations, depending upon construction practices and design criteria. If the plans call for a brick ledge and you're installing the MAS before the concrete pour, Follow the same installation process that you would use to attach the MAS to a form, but be careful not to damage the block out with the nails. Instead of attaching the MAS to the form, attach it to the block out. A block out is a box or barrier that is temporarily installed within a foundation to prevent concrete from entering a certain area. Don't attach the MAS to the block out using the center hole. This can cause the block out to split. When using pre-sheathed or panelized walls, the footing or stem wall must be at least 10 inches wide to provide enough concrete coverage. You can perform this alternate installation either before or after you pour the concrete. Position the MAS so that the alignment mark is even with the inside top edge of the form. Then drive a duplex nail 
through the nail hole in each strap tip. Don't turn the MAS around when performing this alternate installation. If you do, there might not be enough concrete coverage for a proper installation. Don't use this alternate installation process for 2x6 construction. Next, I'm going to explain the installation processes for the MASB, the LMA, and the MAB. Please note, you cannot install any of these products when pre-sheathed or penalized walls are used. The MASB mudsill anchor is designed for block installations only and is installed after the grout is poured but while it's still wet. The MASB has a unique design to accommodate the thickness of the block. Like the MAS, the MASB has two straps and a hook. It also has a bend line. The first step in the installation process is to place the straps on the top of the outside edge of the block directed outside the foundation. Completely submerge the embedded portion in the grout. To finish the installation, wiggle the anchor from side to side, drawing it tightly to the inside of the outer block wall. This helps ensure grout consolidation. The bend line should be even with the outside edge of the block. There are two LMAs, the LMA4 and the LMA6. The LMA4 is for 2x4 sill plates, while the LMA6 is for 2x6 sill plates. Always make sure that you're using the correct size LMA. Using the wrong size is an incorrect installation and will void the warranty of the product. Generally, the LMA is installed in concrete stem walls after the concrete is poured and while it's still wet. The LMA is not for pre-sheathed or penalized construction. There are only two parts to be aware of for the LMA, the straps and the tabs. To install, hold one strap and submerge the anchor in the concrete. Wiggle it side to side to ensure concrete consolidation. Installation is complete when the embedded portion is submerged up to the tabs. Don't let the LMA sink or move while the concrete cures. There are two MABs, the MAB-15 and the MAB-23. The MAB-15 provides a minimum of 7 inches of concrete or grout embedment, and the MAB-23 provides a minimum of 15 inches of concrete or grout embedment. The MAB-23 is typically used in areas where code jurisdictions require embedment in two courses of block. Regardless of which MAB you're installing, the MAB you choose must meet the minimum embedment requirements for a correct installation. The MAB has two straps and a hook. Unlike some other anchors, it doesn't have an embedment line because the embedment line changes depending upon how the MAB is installed. There are only two approved MAB installations for concrete and only one approved installation for block. Whether the application is concrete or block, you always install the MAB after you pour the concrete or grout. Now let's take a look at those approved installations. The preferred MAB concrete installation requires that you spread the straps before you place it in the concrete. This allows the framer to attach the straps to the sill plate correctly by wrapping them around the top of the sill plate without having to drill a hole through it. To install the MAB, hold one strap and place the anchor in the concrete. As you submerge the anchor, wiggle it from side to side to ensure concrete consolidation. Where you place the MAB in concrete or grout depends on the size of the plate. Therefore, before you begin installing an MAB, you need to know the plate size. For a 2x4 plate, you know that you've embedded the MAB deeply enough 
when there are three and a half inches of concrete between the straps. For a two by six sill plate, there have to be five and a half inches of concrete between the straps. In both cases, there has to be at least three inches of strap sticking out of the concrete for there to be enough strap to wrap around the sill plate and accommodate the required nailing. When you embed the anchor correctly, installation is complete. Make sure the anchor doesn't sink or move while the concrete cures. Don't spread either strap more than 45 degrees from vertical. And don't separate the straps more than 90 degrees from each other. Using nearly the same process, you can install the MAB in concrete without first spreading the straps. If you don't spread the straps, however, the framer has to drill a three-quarter inch hole through the sill plate. And if the framer doesn't do this, he can't install the MAB correctly. That's why it's so important for you to know what the framer intends to do. When installing the MAB in block, never spread the straps before you submerge it in the grout. The framer will drill a hole in the sill plate for the straps. Keep the straps together and insert the anchor in the grout just as I showed you in the last concrete application. If you're installing the MAB23, you must grout two courses of block so that there's enough grout to meet the minimum embedment requirement. When the MAB is correctly installed in block, the straps stick out through the hole in the sill plate. The framer then wraps the straps along the top of the sill plate out to the sides and down. This is the only correct installation for block. Whether you're installing the MAB in concrete or in block, don't separate the straps after the concrete cures, and then wrap them from the bottom of the sill plate to the outside edges and around the top. This is an incorrect installation. If you know that the framer isn't going to drill a hole in the sill plate, you must separate the straps before you submerge the MAB in the concrete. We covered quite a bit of information in this short video about mud sill anchors. Let's review what you learned. You're now familiar with the basic terms associated with mud sill anchor installation. You also know basic installation techniques for mud sill anchors and can correctly install a variety of Simpson Strong Tie mud sill anchors. I hope that this video was both enjoyable and educational and that you're able to apply what you learned on the job. Thanks for your interest and attention. Goodbye.